Hello and welcome back to another episode of Salty Mechanics. I am just drowning in paperwork. I mean, I got so much stuff going on here. I don't even know where to begin. So I think I'm just gonna start at the top of the pile and just work my way through. But that's not the only thing we're gonna be doing in this episode because that would be seriously boring. We are taking a closer look at a four cylinder diesel engine as well. So let's just start the episode. You can watch the intro as usual and let's just get on with it. All right, let's go. Let's just go outside and get something done because I don't make any money sitting here. Let's go. he talked about some black smoke coming from the engine and uh, it's not really giving all the power it's supposed to so I thought I should uh, you know just check it out for myself so my first impression is uh, that the turbo doesn't look good I feel like I can't really get the right speed the right RPMs so there's definitely something holding it back and the turbo kind of looks I don't know what to say it just looks really bad <laughs> going out with the exhaust so you know you can't be too alarmed when you see a turbo that looks a bit bad but this one looks particularly bad so I think I'm going to take a look inside it and see how it's um, holding up so this is a 4LH from Yanmar and usually it looks a lot better than this. So you see that wheel in here and here it's pushing in fresh air and you're supposed to be able to turn this. It's a bit tough to turn but you know I can probably force it. Yeah I can 
And this is not somewhere you want to put your finger when the engine is running. <laughs> you know, right here, it can definitely look quite bad and you need the whole turbo to function well for it to sort of compress the air and give the engine the right power. So I think we, I'm gonna to talk to the customer but I'm pretty sure it's a good idea to take the turbo off and replace it and also this part where the exhaust comes out and uh, take a test drive after that and see. throwing things around is that you know you have to clean up as well I just love making a mess but then again I have to clean up and why I love making a mess well it's because sometimes you're just in that work zone and you just want to stay in that zone and you don't want to spend any energy on anything else so it's so nice to just be able to throw things around you but you know I'm not the only one in here so I can't just leave everything a mess for too long. So now I'm gonna have to clean up all this garbage and uh, you know there's coffee just all over the floor. <laughs> and again, this moment takes me back to a time when I used to work as a garbage man. So yeah, da er vi snart ved miljøstasjonen igjen. Nå skal vi dumpe den konteineren her. Nå ser vi speilet her. Jeg vil ikke kjøre på noen. Og så drar vi rett ut på neste jobb. Og det blir tredje jobben. Så vi går unna. Nå er vi på vekta. Og jeg har en tendens til å glemme å kjøre på vekta før jeg dumper konteineren. Noe som er veldig dumt, for da tjener ikke miljøtransport noen penger, og så blir det masse styr. Og så kommer jeg opp på kontoret der oppe, og så sier de Å ja, er det André Distri? Det er ikke så koselig, så jeg prøver å skjerpe meg litt på det. That's one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about. I mean, first of all, I hope you enjoyed that clip from way back. I mean, this is about, you know, blue color jobs. So it's a lot of fun to go back in time and see uh, some of the things that I did uh, way back. I've always loved filming and uh, that's probably why I have these clips. <laughs> we can talk more about that another time. But now I have had a couple of issues making this episode actually. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you guys about that because it's been so stressful lately the past couple of weeks. I've had you know, I don't know what you call it in English, but uh, the best way I can describe it is I've been working in the back end of some jobs, which means fixing up my own mistakes. And I wanted to be able to bring you guys along for those 
um, you know, experiences, I guess you can call them. Uh, but it's been difficult now. The customers have been very much involved and I've you know, had to keep my eye on the ball, focus on the customer and the process. Not only that, but I have a few customers who are, you know, bigger customers like companies, ferries and stuff. I don't work on the big engines that drives and propels the boat forward, but the smaller ones that produce power. And, uh, you know, sometimes I work there with Tom and I can't really bring the camera. Uh, so, you know, after a few weeks, I realized I haven't filmed anything. <laughs> So it's been a bit stressful. Not only that, but I managed to break the camera that I've been using for the past, you know, 18, 19 episodes. And uh, I bought this new one, which is the one I'm looking at right now. It's uh, the Fujifilm X-S10. It's a good camera, but it's so hard to use. And I don't know, something might be broken in it. I don't know, but I have lip syncing problems, sound problems, picture problems, you name it. So for me to just pick up the camera and start filming suddenly became stressful. And this is supposed to be fun, so I need to figure that out. But until I do, just bear with me. You will see some strange things, but I just need to use it and move along. Otherwise, I will never have time to film anything. <laughs> So, I hope you had a good time this episode and uh, that I will see you next time for more Mechanics on the Docks. Thank you, bye bye.